So wasn't that a wonderful clip, you know, where Tukaram tells the emperor, he said, you, you know, you don't need to give everything up. Your duty is to be a king and protect your kingdom and protect your subjects. Even whether you're a king, you're a commoner, you're a priest, the only thing you really need to do to avoid being caught in the snares of this world is to take the Lord's name constantly. And Merwan said, says to us often that the Lord's name is your weapon of offense and defense. He says, it protects you from the influences of the world outside. If you're taking his name constantly, then you are not affected by the lust, by greed, by anger, by avarice. You know, all you're doing is taking his name. And also, it's a weapon of defense because what the Lord's name does is it takes out all the filth that's collected inside of you, brings it to the surface and lets it go. And he says it is such a simple thing to do. You take Baba's name constantly. And by constantly, he means constantly. I have watched Merwan. He takes Baba's name all the time. So if you're talking to him, he's taking Baba's name in his mind. And then when he's replying to you, he's still repeating Baba's name. So he never stops. And the important thing about repeating Baba's name is that if you continue to take his name, uh, Erich said this, I believe. He said that the, the way to reduce your burden of sanskars is to take his name. And why is that? It's because when you're constantly taking Baba's name wholeheartedly, everything that you do is done by him. You don't do anything when you're taking his name. You know, he's, he's the one who's doing everything. So even though you're using up your old sanskars, new ones don't attach to you. They go directly to Baba. So as you take his name more and more, less and less are you attached to the world, less and less do you have um, any need to be appreciated or you don't feel hurt when people vilify you. Things go on and ultimately you'll get to the point where nothing exists except him and you merge in him and become one with him forever. Um, what this actually demonstrated is uh, very clearly that Baba's name is more powerful than Baba himself. Baba himself said that. He said, take my name. My name is more powerful than I am. And Erich would tell this story about the, uh, his advent as Lord Ram. When uh, Ram was trying to cross from India over into Sri Lanka, uh, they needed to br build a bridge. And Hanuman, the monkey god, thought the best way to do that is to throw big rocks into the ocean and slowly a bridge will be built which will carry us from one side to the other. So he said, Lord, you cast the first stone. So Ram picks up a big rock and throws it in and it sank. Now the, the point was they were supposed to float. He picks up another one and it sank. He, so he says to Hanuman, he says, Maruti, why is this happening? He said, Lord, it's happening because you're doing it wrong. So Ram said, how should I do it? So Maruti takes a stone and he wrote Ram's name on it. And then he cast it into the sea and the rock floats. So Erich would say, see, Baba's name is more powerful than Baba himself. And Baba said that too. He said, my name is more powerful than I am. Uh, like I said, this talk is mostly by Meherwan, and I'm going to um, read out something that he's written, which he's, you know, he said the only way you can take his name constantly is to surrender. Unless you surrender, you cannot take his name wholeheartedly. If you're constantly thinking, oh, you know, I don't deserve this, or why didn't I get the results of what I did, then you're not surrendering, and therefore, you're not taking his name wholeheartedly. If you don't take his name wholeheartedly, you cannot achieve the result that taking his name is supposed to achieve. So when he was asked to speak on surrenderance, Merwan wrote something that I brought with me, and I will read out to you. It makes my talk so much easier, you know, that he already said so many of these things. And a lot of you have heard them. Yeah, Merwan says, surrender is not about us, but about Baba. It is not a show of how dedicated we are, but how wonderful and satisfying Baba is. When we are called to leave all and surrender to him, there is nothing nice or pleasant about what he asks. A good example is of Abraham, whom God called upon to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice to him. 
There was nothing pleasant about the demand or the obedience that was required to follow God's command. But the purpose was not to see how dedicated Abraham or Isaac were, but to show that God was worthy of such a sacrifice. Abraham and Isaac saw this. They saw a God who was greater than life itself. They believed and were prepared to sacrifice Isaac on his command. This is one of my favorite bits. Surrender is not sought but embraced. You cannot create the context for surrender to happen. Baba creates the context and you embrace the events as coming from him. For example, when Baba asked Erich if it was possible to leave everything and come to him, Erich said, by your grace, everything is possible. Erich had only two choices, either to believe that Baba was God and to embrace his wish or to stand in rebellion against him. Had he chosen to say no, then his life would never have been the example of a fortunate and perfect slave. In a sense, Erich chose life with a capital L against the death of his progress on the spiritual path. He embraced wish, Baba's wish and so surrendered. So what Merwan is saying is that Erich could have said no. You know, he could have said, I can't give up everything. I can't bring my family to you. He could have chosen to continue with his life, continue with his studies, go into a profession, get married, have a family. But by his grace, he said, by, by your grace, everything is possible. And because of that, he was able to live a life so close to the avatar of the age, to be his right hand. And as Baba said, if there's anybody I consider a friend, it is Erich. I mean, for somebody to have that kind of status in the avatar's life, that is amazing, you know, to be thought of as his friend. So he had the choice. He had the choice and he I mean, when he, Eric Merwan says he chose life with a capital L against progress on the spiritual path. Now, we talked about how marriages, good and bad, are also progress on the spiritual path. And he could have gone down that route. You know, um, Eric was married. He had been engaged to his cousin, Korshid. This, this whole thing about first cousins getting married, you know, in our family, it seems to rear its head over and over again because Erich was engaged to his cousin Korshid and his sister Meru was engaged to her brother Savak. And for a long time after they joined Baba, everybody forgot about the engagement, but not the father of uh, Korshid and Savak. He was not a Baba lover. In fact, he thought Baba was a fraud. And you know, he was very, very strongly against Baba in many ways. And so he said to, P you know, he said to his wife Shirin, who was my grand aunt, he said, you know, see your mare Baba. He knows that our families have engaged these two to each other. And yet, he's holding on to Erich and holding on to Meru and not allowing the marriage to take place. Um, when Erich heard what was being said about Baba, he was so hurt that, you know, because of him, um, Baba was being vilified by Jangirji, who was my grand uncle. He said, Baba, please release me. Let me go and get married. And Baba said, what brought this on? So he said, Baba, you know, Jangiji is saying this, all these horrible things about you and I can't bear it. And Baba said, but I, he's saying it about me. He's not saying it about you. You know, I can bear it. Why do you want to leave me? <laughs> so he said, no. He said, no. So Baba said, right. Let you know, let his wish be fulfilled, you both, both these couples get married. And so they did get married. You know, Baba was present in Akbar Press, which was our family home for the wedding. He didn't sit in on the ceremonies and he didn't eat of the wedding food. Uh, he made Gai Mama, Manu and Meru, who was one, uh, she was going to be her bride herself. He made them cook his meal and keep it separate so that he could eat from that. He didn't eat from the food cooked for everybody else. And um, they got married. Now, when they got married, Baba called Erich and Korshet to him. And he said to Korshet, he said, now you're married, you know, he's your husband. Um, if I ask you for something, will you give it to me? And she said, of course, Baba, whatever you want. So he said, give me Erich. You know, they'd, they'd barely been married an hour. And he said, give me Erich. And she said, Baba, he's already yours. You know, so how can I give him to you? He's already yours. So Baba said, good, very good. 
from today you live like brother and sister. You know, he's no, lo no longer your husband, he's your brother. And so she did, she gave up marriage without a thought. Now, that also is a wonderful kind of surrender, which new bride would happily say to Baba, take my husband, it's all right. But years later, she got, uh, Korshan got involved with a um, man called Mirchandani who set himself up to be a guru. And he got her uh, addicted to little hashish pills. You know, she would take hashish and she would go and he would treat her like a servant. She gave him all her jewelry and all her money and he, he really abused her. Uh, and they, um, the news came to Baba and Baba was told, you know, she's behaving like this. Baba, what, what, what is happening? And, you know, what will happen to her? Because she's, she's disobeying your order, she's going to a... F Baba called her and said, will you give him up? And she said, no, I won't give him up. So then a meeting was called in Merazad and all the uncles and aunts were called to the meeting. And Baba uh, said to them, he said, I have asked Korshid if she will give me Chandani up. And she said, no. Um, so I am now ordering you to not let her enter the threshold of Akbar Press unless and until she has renounced her new master. And all the uncles except my grandfather said, no, we can't do that. You know, she's family, that's her house. So we won't be able to do that. She's always welcome to come whenever. So at that point, Baba said to Gaimai, Manu, Merwan, he said, if she's in that house, you don't step into it. She no longer can come and stay in Bindra house. She cannot visit you. Uh, sever all connection with her. But then somebody said, but Baba, what of her? He said, nothing will happen to Korshid. She gave me Erich, and for her all is forgiven. You know, so when you surrender, even if the surrender does not last permanently, you know, even if you surrender the once, that surrender has results far beyond what you would expect them to have. In fact, I'm going to go back and read another little bit of what Merwan said. He said, surrenderance is a dynamic condition. It's not as if you embrace surrender once and that's it. Each time you're pushed to the brink of despair, you get another chance to say, I can't, but Baba can. Each event brings you closer to Baba and to the complete surrenderance he asks of us. Each moment of our lives exists only to show us that our need of him is absolute and that holding fast to his daman is the only way out for us. Paul the Apostle said, and so we are told, I die daily. He was talking about the death of the false self and the resurrection each new day of it. Only when the false self became true, then the God-realized self would stop dying daily and live truly. So what is the easiest way to surrender to Baba? The only possible way is by making him our constant companion. How do we do that? By repeating his name constantly. Baba himself has given us this most simple, most effective method of surrendering to him. He has said, my name is even more powerful than I am. And by repeating his name, we will eventually come to this end of, uh, end of this cycle of life and death and get God-realization. This happens because when you take his name constantly, as you go about your day-to-day -day duties, he does everything. Realization comes at that moment when through total surrender to his wish and will, we become totally and truly his for all time to come. Surrender is only possible when we fully, with all our heart, mind, and soul, accept the sovereignty of Baba over everything. Not a leaf moves without his will, and once we immerse ourselves in this conviction, surrender is embraced and embraces us in return. That's what Merwan says about surrender and repeating his name. Uh, people ask Merwan in Mandli Hall very often, they say, but you know, you live here, you live in Baba's home, it's so easy for you to sort of shut out the outside world and remember him. And he reminds them, he says, I did not always live here. I lived in Pune, I had a job, I had to look after the family. And he said, but I was always from the beginning brought up to remember Baba all the time. And he said, in the beginning it was not easy. I would remember Baba and Baba's uh, 
name, I would try and repeat it, but then my mind would wander and something else would take over and then I would suddenly remember, oh, I stopped remembering Baba and go back to it. And in fact, um, Bhavji used to tell the story about where Baba told him that he should take Baba's name for one hour every day. And after the first day, ba he went to Baba and said, I can't do it. So Baba said, well, why not? What's the matter? He said, well, every time I start taking your name, other thoughts start to come in. And Baba said, did I tell you to stop other thoughts coming in? I told you to repeat my name. Other thoughts will come. But if you keep on repeating my name in spite of their thoughts coming, then I will take over and you won't have, to. I didn't ask you to worry about other thoughts. You just take my name. That's what I asked you to do. And that's what Merwan says. He says, you know, of course things will come up. You will, uh, there'll be lapses in your constant remembrance. But he said, Baba has told us that if you ask me for help in remembering him, remembering me constantly, then I cannot refuse you. That is the one thing that he cannot refuse. So he can refuse to give you the lottery ticket that will win the prize. <laughs> he, can, he can refuse to give you a very, very rich husband or wife. You know, he can refuse to give you that wonderful meal that you were thinking of or that special bottle of wine that you were saving for a special occasion. In fact, don't save wine for a special occasion. My sister once had a very old bottle of brandy that was given to her and she wouldn't drink it, she wouldn't drink it and it was kept at the back of her cupboard. And one day she forgot it was at the back of her cupboard and she was tidying up and it fell out and smashed and so it was gone. Had she allowed us to drink the darn thing, you know, at least we would have had some pleasure out of it. But no, she was keeping it for a special occasion, you know. So asking Baba for these kind of things, he probably will give them to you. I mean, he does give them to you. If you ask him wholeheartedly, he'll give you anything, really. I must tell you, um, when I, you know, when you lose your milk teeth and your new teeth start coming out, um, the middle tooth here, I, uh, it came out sort of like that, through the upper part of the jaw, so I had to have dental surgery and have it removed. And then I had a false tooth in it, and you know, when you're six or seven, having a false tooth is such a shameful thing. You think of that as old people stuff, but I had a false tooth. And I would sit in the toilet, nowhere else. I would sit in the toilet every morning and pray to Baba. I would say to Baba, Baba, please, don't give me anything else. Give me a third tooth. Over and over again, every day, I would pray to Baba. And suddenly, maybe a year or so later, my dental plate started breaking. I'd go to the dentist and get it sealed up again and wear it, and then a little while later, it would break. So my dentist was not prepared to think of the possibility that there was a third tooth. But we changed dentists and he took an x-ray and he said, actually, there is a third tooth in there. And I, I, you know, I said, wow. But what had happened was this little eye tooth over here, you know, the pointy one, it had moved from there and come out over here. So I had this really pointed front tooth like a vampire. And I had to go to the dentist and get it filed down. And I still had my milk tooth until about four years ago when I had to have it removed. And my grandmother always said, she said, if you had asked Baba for something better than a third tooth, you could have asked him for God realization. He might have given it to you. You wasted your time asking him for a third tooth. I said, but he gave it to me. You know, he did give it to me. It's, it's like my son, you know, I really, really wanted my son. So I asked Baba over and over again for a child. And of course I got it. But anything else you ask Baba, anything other than help in remembering his name constantly, you get it, you get it at a price. You have to pay a price for it. You know, it doesn't come free. Whereas asking him for help to repeat his name constantly, free of charge, you don't have to pay for it. There is no little sting in the tail when he gives it to you. It comes to you with no conditions attached. And that's good to know, you know, that's good to know. Of course, people still ask for things and you know, they throw things into the dhuni and say, Baba, I'm throwing this in or that in. And having seen the results of what happens when people throw things without really thinking them through into the dhuni, I take my stick and throw it in and say, Baba, you take what you want. You know, I don't, I don't have any say in the matter. You take what you want. And something always goes. It might not be what I want it to go, but it goes. Yeah. Has anybody got an experience of taking Baba's name at all? I'm, a, I'm sure all of you take Baba's name. Come on, you're the Baba lovers, you know. Does anybody have a practice for constantly remembering Baba? 
Yes, you do. Sorry? You're constantly with him. There, perfect. She's constantly with him. Yeah. On the path to God realization, Simon, dear. Yes, but do you take his name? Excellent. There you go. You're, you're, I mean, you're miles ahead of me. I, I take his name, but it doesn't come all the time. There you go. It is that whole thing about experience. Eric and I never got that one. We didn't have that one. But, of course, the fact that you're taking his name constantly, which m means that, you know, don't, like Eric would say, he would say, yes, you know, do whatever you have to do, but don't do it because of God realization. Don't forget, he said, God realization is ultimately going to come to you whether you want it or not. You know, that's perfect. A anything that we use to remind ourselves of him is wonderful. Um, you know, Tukaram said to Shivaji, he said, you do whatever you have to do, but in the back of your mind, take his name constantly. And that is a surefire path to achieving your goal, which is merging in the ocean. Um, having said that, don't be in a hurry to get God realized. You know, there was a group of people sitting around Erich one day. I think it was Charles Haynes's group. And they were talking about God realization. And they, they said to Erich, Erich, how can we get God realization more quickly? And Erich said to them, he said, but why? And he turned to one of them and he said, brother, do you enjoy eating prawns? And he said, yes, yes, Erich, I love prawns. He said, so do I. But he said, remember, the moment you get God realized, prawns and shit will taste the same. Yeah. You know, I used to find it very hard to surrender to Baba. And I often fought against things that were happening in my life. And then I realized that, you know, I was spending so much time and effort and energy in fighting all of this. Uh, I expected things to turn out a certain way, and when they didn't, I would get angry and argue with Baba and say, you know, what is the matter with you? What about your organizational skills? They really are awful. You need to get things organized better. I would, I would actually argue with him constantly. I spent a lot of years arguing with Baba in my mind. And finally, one day it occurred to me, maybe I should just let things happen. Maybe I should just take a deep breath and let things happen. And once I started doing that, things became a lot easier. If I was not fighting him, if I was just saying, okay, you know, your will be done, then life became simpler, I had less headaches, I didn't have to struggle so much, and so I do. And of course, you know, I promised, I, Merwan, I would not mention this, I actually promised Steve Klein I wouldn't mention it, but Baba, I'm sorry, you know, that promise was meant to be broken. In this whole thing, this exercise of saying, okay, Baba, you do what you want, I surrender. That's the lazy person's path to loving God themselves and the universe. I mean, if you can just do that, you don't have to fight. You can then just love Baba and say, right, okay, you know, I already said to you, your will be done, let it be done. And if you think hammering me is going to change it, no, it's not going to change it. I will still love you. And uh, it also helps you look at people who irritate you in a different way. You know, you look at them and you think, I don't have to work hard changing this person. They can be who they want. Merwan and Erich both say, you know, if you don't like someone, at least say Jai Baba to the Baba in them. And that's something that I have had to train myself to do, is to look at somebody and say, Baba is in that sod as well. You know, I, I don't like them. I don't have to like them, but they've got Baba in him or her. And you say Jai Baba and you walk away. You know, before I used to struggle with this idea that everybody had to like me and I had to like everybody. Otherwise, I was not being successful as a Baba lover. I now realize that, no, I don't have to like everybody and everybody doesn't have to like me. In fact, a lot of people don't like me. But that's no problem. You know, that's no problem. I don't have to be involved with them. All I have to do is say Jai Baba and walk away. And it makes life so much simpler. So remembering Baba not only brings you closer to God realization, it simplifies your life in many, many ways. 
you know, when your kids are giving you a hard time or your partner is being particularly unreasonable, if you take Baba's name, take a deep breath and say, I say Jai Baba to the Baba in you and walk away. Good for him, good for you. Everybody wins. Instead of which, if you start an argument and say, you know, this, this is not right, I don't deserve this. He gets upset, you get upset, you throw a few things, they throw a few things and nobody's happy and you've broken a lot of good crockery into the bargain. You don't want to be doing that. You know, I had asked Adrian, where is Adrian? She's there. I said to her, I said, we really need to um, do a song where you get the same, you know, when you were watching that clip, and the, in the end, they go, vittal, 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 vittal. Your hair stand on end because you know that God is present when they chant together like that. And I really, really wanted us to do something similar. And we will, at the end, she, Adrian will lead us in chanting Baba's name. But why give up? Mechanical or no mechanical, you're repeating his name. That's what Bhauji was told. I didn't ask you to stop other thoughts from coming in. I told you to repeat my name. So mechanical or no mechanical, it doesn't make any difference. As long as you repeat his name, eventually it becomes less and less mechanical and more and more genuine. And that's when you know that you are succeeding. It's like, you know, a psychologist say to people, if you fake a smile, ultimately you will smile for sure. Um, that's what it is. Even if you take his name mechanically, eventually it becomes genuine. You know, you can't fake a smile for long without actually feeling happier inside. And it's the same thing with Baba's name. You can't take his name mechanically without it affecting the, the way you are. And so the more you take his name, the less the, the outside world bothers you. This, this, this Maya that you're in is there for everybody. I mean, I used to live in England and it was not Maya free zone, not at all, <laughs> you know. And Merazad, most, not Maya free zone you could come across at times. At certain times it's not, at certain times it's lovely. Merabad is the same. It doesn't mean that you go into places where he was and which are his homes or his centers and Maya is not there. In fact, Maya comes in there with a vengeance because Maya wants to be close to Baba as well. You know, yes, of course Maya does. She's his creation, she wants to be close to him. So she's there with a vengeance, she's there all the time, you know, causing people to bicker with each other, to try and take over territories. Merwan often says to me, he's, and he says to people at uh, Mandli Hall as well, he said, be very careful. You who live in Baba's homes, in Baba's centers, be very, very careful. He said, your world is like a microcosm of the world outside. And what you do is reflected, much magnified in the world around you. Now, an interesting, Proof of this is there was a time when there was some kind of altercation in, in the trust and Bauji said, I am going to resign. The couple of days after he said that, our then Prime Minister in New Delhi said, for similar reasons, I am going to resign. And this went on for like a week. Everybody would go to the Prime Minister and say, don't resign, sir, don't resign. People would go to Bauji and say, don't resign, Bauji, don't resign, Bauji. And Erich, and Erich was at the trust office during those days and we would go into Bhauji's office every morning. And one day I finally said to Bhauji, I said, Bhauji, you know, this prime minister is going on and on and then you, you are prolonging this. I said, why don't you take back your resignation? Then that man will also do the same and everybody can go back to a quiet existence. <laughs> and he, he said, what? Just because of me, he's not taking back his resignation? I said, I think so. <laughs> and you know, Bhauji took back his resignation and shortly after that, the Prime Minister also took back his resignation. It happens, you know, this is, I mean, this is very concrete, but whenever we have extreme periods of issues coming up between residents or between residents and pilgrims, we notice that in the world, you see, you hear a lot about people fighting each other, you know, people killing each other in Iraq or wherever. It, it's all magnified and reflected in the world outside. So in a way, it's our duty to behave nicely and to be good Baba lovers so that the world outside doesn't suffer because of our doings. Merwan always says, when things are perfect in Merabad, Merazad, Myrtle Beach, Avtar's abode, wherever, 
He said, the world will be a wonderful place. But that's not going to happen very soon. So until then, we suffer. You know, we suffer until then. But that doesn't mean we stop making the effort. You know, everything that Baba creates is very important. So his homes are very important. The people who live in them are very important. And through them, Baba does a lot of work around the world. You know, if we, if we gave up on politics completely, maybe we could do away with all governments and have a very peaceful, happy, universal state. Don't quote me. Could happen. Might not happen. But it is, it's, it's irrelevant. All we have to do is take his name, remember him constantly, and, you know, do our best to be loving and kind to each other. I am not the best example of being loving and kind to each other because there are times when I am not loving and kind. But like Baba often said, don't do as I uh, say. No, do as I say, don't do as I do. Now, I'm not Baba, but you know, I, I am terribly bad at uh, doing as I say. So sometimes I lapse, but I will make the effort to be loving and kind. And hopefully we all will, you know, yes. No, you don't have to verbally sound it out. And in fact, somebody asked me in Mer uh, asked Merwan in Merazad, what name should we call him by? You know, should we call him Mer Baba? Should we call him Autar Mer Baba? What name? And Merwan said, you're not saying it aloud for people to hear and appreciate that you're taking his name. So in your mind, you just keep saying Baba, Baba, Baba. Baba said, I've give not given you a difficult name. It's only two syllables, Baba, you know. To remember me in your heart by saying Baba Baba constantly. It's not like you have to say, Oh Mer Baba, Oh Mer Baba loudly so that everybody knows, Oh my, Mera is taking Baba's name. Look how wonderful she is, she's taking his name constantly. Not necessary. You just have to take it internally. And in fact, uh, the Hindus have a thing that they call Shwas Jap, which means you take God's name with every breath. And um, this young man had come to the trust office. And, you know, I am a big, big fan of the Gayatri Mantra. I like listening to it. It's very soothing and all the rest of it. And this man had a story about the Gayatri. So Erich called him and said, sit down, tell her the story about this Gayatri Mantra. Turns out that this man was such a devotee of the goddess Gayatri that he would take his, her name with every breath. Now, chanting the Gayatri Mantra gives you a lot of powers. It's supposed to make, make you able to heal ailments psychically. It's supposed to make you long-lived and... All sorts of things happen. You can read other people's minds. And this started to happen to this young man. You know, he started getting all these powers. He attracted a lot of wealth to him. And one day while he was taking the Gayatri Mantra, he was chanting the Gayatri Mantra in his mind, he suddenly saw a man in a white robe standing in front of him. It was a vision he had. He had this vision of this man. And he thought, who is this person who has come between me and my personal deity? Anyway, the, the vision disappeared. He didn't think much of it. Few days later, same thing happened. And he started to wonder who this person is. <clears throat> then he, he, went, he was invited to his friend's house for a meal or something. And as he walked in the door, he saw a picture of Baba, full, full length picture of Baba in the white sadra. And he looked at it and he said, who is this man? So his friend said, why are you asking? So he told him the story. He said, you know, when I do my Gayatri Mantra Jap, I saw him twice. So then his friend told him, that's Mer Baba. He, we believe that he's the avatar of the age. And he thought, Gai Mother Gayatri is giving me a message. She's saying, he's the one that you need to be with. I should start taking his name. So he started taking Baba's name. And then Erich stopped him and he said, and so did your powers increase? He said, no. Everything fell away one by one. Everything went. I couldn't read people's minds, my money went, I, you know, I started getting sick also <laughs> because he had, by that time, he had, when he came to us, he had some problem with asthma. He said, no, Erich, everything went. But he said, you know what came instead? He said, this kind of enormous peace came in. And he said, I don't mind what comes now because I know Baba is with me through everything. And I think that's what remembering him constantly achieves. I mean, he was very fortunate because he had practiced with the Gayatri Mantra all those years. So for him to take ba Baba's name with each breath was dead simple. When you hear the Gayatri Mantra and then you compare it to Baba's name, there's no comparison, you know, like this is just like that. 
but the Gayatri Mantra is quite involved. And so he said to me, he said, see, see. But I said to him, I said, why are you telling me this? You know, I only listen to the Gayatri Mantra because it's very soothing and relaxing. If somebody wrote a similar thing for Baba, I would listen to that as well. But I take Baba's name. I don't, when I'm listening to the Gayatri, I'm not chanting it with it, the song. I'm taking Baba's name. Oh, he said, that's all right then. But Bal Natu, who was a Brahmin and a scholar at that, he loved listening to this. I'd put it on, I'd put the CD on and he would come and stand outside the door and say, ah, ha, 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 ha. How wonderful to listen to the Gayatri early in the morning, you know. He, he was devoted to Baba, but for him too, that was part of his upbringing. So he enjoyed listening to the Gayatri Mantra. So taking God's name, simple way to achieve peace and tranquility, to find your way to him and to surrender everything to him once and for all. Um, I think we are coming up to five minutes before my time. So Adrian, shall we start the song? Everybody, please join in. It's the Merdun that Adrian will be singing. I'm coming down to sing with you.